feel like a fraud. Is everyone else smarter, brighter, or better? And if you're feeling this way, trust me, you are not alone. In fact, 70% of people across the world actually feel this way at one time or another. It's called imposter syndrome. As Stephen Cavazos reports, these feelings of worthlessness can impact you at work, school, and home. It's very easy to look around and be like, I don't, I don't feel like I belong here. And it's because I just see what I don't have. But I just felt very inadequate and felt kind of very lost and worried about the future. I wasn't supposed to be fitting in where I am. These college kids have all experienced imposter syndrome. They struggle to internalize their own success. So they're constantly worried about or concerned that other people are going to find out that they're a fraud or a fake in the social group. Brigham Young University management professor Jeffrey Bednar spearheaded research into imposter syndrome. A Twitter poll found 87% of people said they had experienced it. I feel it right now. I feel like everybody else knows so much more. In academia, most at risk, women in graduate programs, perfectionists, and first-generation college students. Birth order and parenting styles can also play a role. Children who are praised for the grades instead of the process are more at risk. As for dealing with it, Bednar found many people bent to try to mask the feelings. By engaging for hours and hours at a time and watching movies or doing other things that really didn't help them contribute to their success. A more successful approach? Having someone outside of your particular social group where you're feeling like an imposter who can help you to recalibrate your perspective. And remember, you can have imposter moments, but you don't have to live an imposter life. Stephen Cavasso's KSAT 12 News. Well, another important step to overcoming imposter feelings, acknowledge your thoughts and put them into perspective. Uh, one of the professors that you heard from says you can experience imposterism at any age and at any stage of your life. To see if you may be suffering from it, there is actually an online test you can take at www.testyourself.psychtest.com. Time now, 928, 40 degrees out. We'll be right back after the break.
Good morning. Welcome back and happy weekend. 931 this morning, Saturday, January 9th. Thank you so much for starting your day with us. Sarah Costa joining us just down the hall. Sarah, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing good. You know, earlier last week we talked about I ordered a trampoline and I'm very excited because it came in and I was exercising inside and I was like, this is really nice because I don't have to go outside mm. where it's super cold, Sarah. Yeah, it's chilly out there this morning. We were able to see temperatures to freezing here in San Antonio, but we've already seen a rise in temperatures. I mean, we started off at 32 and now we're at 40 degrees and the thermometer keeps on rising. One thing I want to talk about is how clouds are going to increase today, showing you the visible satellite imagery from our GO-16 satellite that can see every individual cloud from space. It's amazing. What it's seeing right now is clear skies over San Antonio, but you look to the west and you look to the south and you can see very clearly the increasing cloud deck there. It's overcast right now in Del Rio, overcast in Uvalde, Eagle Pass, Cachula. You're starting to see skies become gray. And here in San Antonio, for the first part of the day, it'll be nice and sunny second part of the day we'll be seeing overcast skies all right temperatures out there right now warming up 40 degrees in san antonio something to note though is that out toward del rio where it's cloudy right now Carrizo springs where it's cloudy right now temperatures are in the 30s it's going to be harder for del rio and Carrizo springs to warm up at today they'll probably be cooler than us here in san antonio and that doesn't happen too often with areas south and west of san antonio being cooler than us here in san antonio here in san antonio we will warm up to 55 degrees it's it's going to be a nice but cool day with those afternoon clouds and then tomorrow we are going to flip the switch. We're going to start off at 45 with cold rain throughout the day. And in fact, temperatures will fall throughout the day. We'll only be at 40 degrees in the afternoon, a cold and blustery Sunday ahead for us. Parts of Texas, though, could see snow, so we got a lot to talk about in the forecast. I'll have a look ahead coming up soon. Max. Thank you, Sarah. Before we even get to the story, we do need to tell you that the vaccinations, the registrations have completely filled out. So that is something that, that you should know before we even go into the details. And this is all related to the Alamo Dome, which you know has been a site of mass food distributions and a center so people could get their blood donations safely. Well, it's turned into a mass COVID-19 vaccine distribution site, and the plan is to provide 1,500 free doses of vaccines a day as long as the su supply is in stock. And right now, the city managed to secure about 9,000 uh, vaccine doses, and we're able uh, to vaccinate about 9,000 people. But we do have an update. The city did tweet out that all these spots are unfortunately filled up at this time. That's right. So it opened up at 9 a.m. this morning, and just moments after opening up, well, it's sold out. It's completely packed. We've been getting calls throughout the morning, social media messages. We just want to let you know right now it is completely packed it is sold out. It actually got filled within 13 minutes of going up. Now we did speak to the city. They said that if there is any more availability, they will let us know. So when that does become available, we'll have all those updates on KSAT.com. Now to the latest news this morning, San Antonio police asking for the public's health this morning in finding a person who is responsible for killing a woman in her 50s. Officers telling us family members were in town visiting but never heard back from the relative after knocking on the door of her apartment. Those family members notified the property manager who then called police. All of this happening in an apartment on Highway 90 near Springvale Drive. That's when officers found the woman dead inside. Investigators say she suffered apparent trauma, describing the case as a homicide. If you have any information that can help, you're asked to call police. That number on your screen at 210-207-7635. Well, meanwhile, Bear County Sheriff's deputy is behind bars after he is allegedly accused of sexual assault of a seven-year-old girl. Sheriff Javier Salazar says 40-year-old Gerard Mamorno has been on and off with the Bear County Sheriff's Office for about seven years. He's accused of the sexual attack that happened back in 2016 and 2017. BCSO's Public Integrity Unit became aware of the allegations on December 8th and launched an investigation. A search warrant for his home was executed yesterday along with the warrant for his arrest. Sticking with BCSO, Sheriff Javier Salazar's longtime head of law enforcement division retiring after Salazar says he was unhappy with the handling of a high profile case. Assistant Chief Deputy Dale Bennett making his exit after Sheriff Salazar said Bennett did not oversee the Springs investigation properly. Now, this Sunday actually marks two years since the bodies of Nicole Olson and her daughters were found inside that upscale home. And to this date, we still don't know if it was a triple murder or 
She killed her children and then herself. The case was not handled to the level that I believe that it should have, especially in light of the fact that we've been at it for two years now. Salazar describes what he calls holes in the Antigua Springs investigation. He said the case had been handed over to a different investigator. The sheriff also says that Bennett expressed reservations about revamping of the agency and putting more resources towards combating organized crime and domestic terrorism. Well, with the cold front forecasted for San Antonio this weekend, like our Sarah Spivey has been saying, the city of San Antonio and its partnering agencies are providing access to shelter and services to the homeless community. Haven for Hope will be open to provide shelter to those experiencing homelessness. All clients will be able to sleep indoors and will be given additional clothing, including warm jackets. New clients at Haven for Hope are asked to visit its intake facility, which is currently operating out of the Donation Center at 1 Haven for Hope Way between 7 in the morning and 3 p.m. Monday through Friday. Individualized services will be available for clients after hours and on weekends, according to city officials. Households with children are welcome at the shelter at any time or 24-7. Nightly enrollment for the shelter will begin at 3 p.m. through 8 p.m. daily. Time now is 937, 40 degrees out. Plus, not a double, but a rare triple conjunction. Details on when you can catch the solar site. That's next on GMSA. And taking a live look out of the Alamo City, 40 degrees, beautiful shot of the Alamo City. But cold start to the weekend. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey right after the break. Check this out. Max, Yeah. it's a Nakwa Springs. We got the cinnamon buns, right? And then we're gonna have to bust open the sticker. He's talking to David Elder. He didn't give us a knife. <laughs> He's not. I said it, I said it after the shot. Oh, okay. What is, wait, what did Elder bring? I hear him talking about cinnamon buns. No, no, you stay, you're in your corner. You're in your COVID-free corner. You don't get this. I just heard cinnamon buns. You don't get this, Sarah. <laughs> you stay in your COVID-free corner. <laughs> you stay safe, princess. We're risking our lives here. You are. For these pastries. <laughs> can you send me a photo, Max?
Well, weekends just got better in San Antonio with SeaWorld announcing it's staying open for 12 months. So during the month of January, they're bringing back Wild Days, a celebration of wild animals that raises awareness on the park's rescue efforts and inspires guests to care for animals and care for nature. Our Alicia Barrera is live at SeaWorld San Antonio, giving us a little bit of a preview. Good morning. Well, you guys, I can't help but laugh at myself because I promised a raptor, but it's really a rodent. So stick with me. Take a look on your screen at the type of animals that you'll be able to see during wild days. It kicks off today and wraps up on January 31st. If you love birds, you'll want to check out Flying High and have your cameras ready. The organization Last Chance Forever helps nurse injured or sick birds to help and during wild days is showing off what those birds can do, including a great horned owl, a red-tailed hawk, and a vulture. Some other animals you'll learn about and probably run into between all the fun include a penguin, lemurs, an American bald eagle, and here's the rodent, Miss Jabari, a wild rodent who loves fruits and veggies and is found in Italy, North Africa, and Sub-Saharan Africa, but you won't want to get too close to Jabari. So if something comes up from behind her, uh, she can sense it, and if something comes in front of her, you know she's got those vibrissae that she can feel around as well as longer hairs around her feet too. Um, so she's built to uh, really detect things when it's dark outside. Just a few quills to be aware of. Jabari turns 12 years old this Valentine's Day and you'll be able to get closer to animals like her. SeaWorld San Antonio is abiding by social distance guidelines so make sure to wear your mask and again respect that six feet distancing. Wild Days wraps up at on January 31st, but expect a lot of fun from SeaWorld as, again, they'll be open every weekend for the next 12 months. Reporting live, Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Alicia. Well, if you missed the great conjunction last month when the two biggest planets in our solar system, Jupiter and Saturn, you can still catch now a triple conjunction Whoa. this weekend. All right, so Jupiter and Saturn have drifted about a degree from each other, so they still remain quite close from the human eye's perspective. Now Mercury joining in on the fun today and tomorrow. Three planets are going to be forming a small triangle in the sky just before sunset, but be sure to have a seat facing toward the west-southwest horizon because it's going to be a sight you're not going to want to miss and a rare one of that. Whenever I say conjunction... Well, you're going to miss it anyway because it's going to be cloudy tonight. Oh, so okay. Sorry. Well, sorry to burst your bubble. I was going to talk about... It'll be cloudy tonight and it'll be cloudy tomorrow around sunset. Oh. Sorry, Mercury. That's okay. It was your time to shine. I just had to be honest. I don't... No, no, no. We, we like honesty. We don't want people calling it like, I, I can't see the conjunction. Yeah, you're not going to be able to see it. I'm sorry. Okay. Right, we're not going to worry about it then. <laughs> All right. I hope I wasn't too attitudinal there. All right, let's go ahead and take a look out with the following count. Mountain Cedar is high today at 950. That is not good news, but the good news is tomorrow's rain is going to help to wash some of that pollen out of the air, which is really nice. And mold is low today at 80. All right, outside right now, we're warming up. It's 40 degrees. We started off at freezing in San Antonio, so it's nice to see the thermometer rising there. It's still cold out there, and it's going to be cool throughout the day. We're really not going to warm up too much. It's 36 in Kerrville, 39 in Uvalde, 39 in Carrizo Springs, 40 in Del Rio, 43 in Gonzales. I want to show you something on the satellite imagery. You can see those clouds that I was talking about just a little while ago. They're starting to spread out and uh, not really at San Antonio yet, but you'll notice a few clouds around lunch, and then in the afternoon, you'll start to see overcast skies by the late afternoon. So it's cloudy in Laredo, it's cloudy in Eagle Pass, and cloudy in Del Rio. It's going to stay cloudy there throughout the day. Take a look at the high-res future cast. It shows those clouds moving in, too. In fact, again, even by late in the evening hours, we could already start to see some rain out there, some light rain possible by midnight. But our big show is going to be tomorrow, where all day long it'll be raining around San Antonio. So we are going to see those increasing clouds. By 4 p.m., it'll be mostly cloudy, if not overcast, and then overcast in the evening. Notice temperatures really don't rise all that much. It'll be cool in the afternoon, too, 55 degrees for the high temperature. But if you want to spend some time outdoors today, you're going to want to get out, uh, this weekend, rather, you're going to want to get outside today because, again, tomorrow, 
going to be a completely upside down day where we'll start off at 45 and we'll cool down throughout the day because of all the rain that's headed our way. And look at that, a big upper level low right over the Four Corners region. This is going to cause a headache for a good portion of Texas, which is under a winter storm watch for potential for some snowfall from Lubbock to Midland. Dallas going to see some snow just north of Austin, possibly going to see some snow as well near the Georgetown area, near College Station and in East Texas. But here in San Antonio, it's going to remain completely rain for us. No snow in San Antonio. Hate to burst your bubble with the conjunction and if you want to see some rain, <laughs> but just know that it's going to be rainy throughout the day tomorrow. A uh, little bit of snow mix is possible for Kerrville and Fredericksburg, but accumulation we're not totally worried about other than maybe potentially some elevated surfaces. And I can take you through the feature cast tomorrow morning, starting off at 45 with areas of rainfall. The rainfall will continue into the afternoon. Temperatures will fall to near 40 degrees in the afternoon. And then you can see possibility for a brief changeover. Kerrville, Fredericksburg and in the Austin area tomorrow in the afternoon. But by the evening, rain will be coming to an end uh, and it's going to be uh, really nice nice week ahead. But again, just look at these temperatures starting off at 45 tomorrow and decreasing to 40 degrees during the afternoon. When all is said and done, we could see half an inch to an inch of rainfall in San Antonio, and that is much needed rain. So that's the good news with the cold and damp and gray weather tomorrow. We need the rain. As far as the week ahead, looks pretty nice. Cold starts and comfortable afternoons. All right. Thank you, Sarah. 947, 40 degrees out. We'll still head on GMSA, an attractive addition coming soon to the downtown area. Details on how and why it's being made possible. Good morning and welcome back. In the past couple of years, Hemisphere has seen a handful of improvements like its Yanaguana Garden.
Because of a generous donation, Hemisphere will be seeing another attractive addition. I spoke with the nonprofit's director about a garden coming soon to the area thanks to the Mays Family Foundation. For several years, the Mays Family Foundation has given back to San Antonio, and that giving continues with the largest donation that Hemisphere Conservancy has ever received. In honor of the late Peggy Mays, the foundation has donated $1 million to Hemisphere to build a garden in her honor. It's a wonderful feeling to build trust with a, a donor and to have them want to build something in the matriarch's memory here at the park that will last for generations. I mean, it's really touching. It doesn't look like much now. It's bare and has minimal landscaping. But in the future, Peggy Mays Garden will be full of florals and a small walking trail in this 25,000 square foot space. So what you're going to see are beautiful colors of flowers and you'll see bushes and more tree cover and for shade and it'll attract pollinators and it'll be beautifully lit at night and it'll be a wonderful place for people to sit and enjoy nature in the heart of downtown San Antonio. The garden will be between now under construction Civic Park and Hemisphere's Yanaguana Garden. Ann Cruz, the executive director of Hemisphere Conservancy, says the construction for the garden will start late this year and hopefully be completed next year. Peggy Mays loved gardens. She loved beauty. She loved making San Antonio a better place for everyone who lived here. And when she passed away in November, it just became obvious that they needed to name it in her memory. It's such a beautiful testament to her legacy and all of the impacts she and her family have made on San Antonio. Really enjoyed uh, seeing where that garden's going to be and hopefully, like they said, be completed by the end or of 2022. All right, 952, 40 degrees out. Well, there's so much to see on social media, but have you ever fallen into a depressive spiral tomorrow on GMSA? Find out ways to stop your doom scrolling addiction.
Well, in the news you need to know before you go, arson is investigating the cause of an overnight fire at a home in the 400 block of Canton Street. Firefighters say it started in the backyard shed around 4 a.m. and then spread to the home. The shed was a complete loss and the back of the home sustained heavy damage. Well, it's 44 degrees outside. Temperatures are rising, but clouds are going to increase in the afternoon. We're really only going to get up to 55 degrees today. And if you think that is chilly, well, my friends, just wait for tomorrow. We'll start off at 45 and temperatures will fall throughout the day. It'll also be rainy all day long here in San Antonio. We could see half an inch to an inch of rainfall, much needed rainfall at that. Of course, we'll be keeping our eye up in the hill country in the afternoon. We could see a light wintry mix, but uh, there's a lot of factors there then I'm it's just going to rain in San Antonio, so I don't even want to get your hopes up for snow or anything like that. Uh, looking ahead to the week, we're going to be sunny and comfortable in the afternoons. It'll be cold, though, to start every day. All right, well, we want to give you a little sneak peek of this week's episode of Texas Eats. And our very own David Elder. I can't see you, David, but welcome. I'm so Let's excited go. in Let's studio. Go. All right, so I've been designated with showing off some of the amazing samples you brought. So tell us what we're looking at. Well, you're looking at all different kinds of pan dulce treats from Panaderia Jimenez. This is right off Fredericksburg Road, right across from Deco Pizzeria, which is going to be featured on today's show. And uh, Max, you got you got it all over there, though. You got I got, all, I got the whole smorgasbord. You got the going pink on. cake. You got the conchas. You got right. these giant cinnamon Let's buns. Try to do this one more time. That's not it. That's not. But you know what that is? <laughs> that's mm, that's from Tacos Jimenez, which is on the show today okay. as well. Oh my gosh. That was a little bit of menudo. See, little, this is. We tease you with food stuff all Ooh, throughout the. <laughs> that's <laughs> it. But look at that there. shot. Come on, smile, take bites. Max. You're holding. There you go. I'm I'm just trying not to mess it up. Yeah, don't drop it. The box is bigger than There you go. So now we're jumping back. This is menudo. These are little barbacoa tacos from Tacos Jimenez as well that's going to be on the show and we get an exclusive interview with Flaco Jimenez himself uh, that's his son and his daughter-in-law they're the ones running the taco truck that's named oh you know it's a fun play on his name Tacos Jimenez but just a really sweet man I, I mean a Tejano music icon a legend especially here in South Texas I mean this man's music I grew up listening to his music it was so cool to meet him um, but the food's delicious as well it's just a, kind of the kicker right uh, we're going to find out about this food truck, where it's at, how you get to it. Deco Pizzeria is also on the show today. We're going to go inside, see how they make all their calzones. And you know I had to eat everything that they brought out. All right, I have a, a oh quick question for you. Okay. Are you okay, Costa? I, wa I want a calzone. <laughs> Those are so, so good. So, David, what is the difference? I don't mean to put you on the spot, but you are the foodie expert. Put me on the spot. Difference between a calzone and a stromboli. Mm. I would definitely say it's the way the cheeses are blended together. Um, it's also the ingredients that go inside. So traditionally, like the calzone and the stromboli, it's going to be that folded over dough. It's going to have everything crammed inside. It's just really kind of dealer's choice. I know that a lot of it is the ricotta mozzarella blend that's also going in there. But for me, calzones and it's all cheating. You know what I mean? Just get a pizza. Yeah. Just get a okay, pizza. Okay, I had a hot pizza take. Folded you over. had a hot take. What's your hot take? I said strombolis and calzones is better than pizza. Wow. I will say I know. they're a little bit more portable. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> it's like a big Hot Pocket. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> we all loved Hot Pockets. You grew up, I mean, if you were in college or anything, you ate a Hot Pocket every now and again for a meal. There but, are Hot Pockets, hot pockets. <laughs> in the They're just fancy. Room. Those Kelsons are fancy adult <laughs> so Hot Pockets. It's, it's fancy just like an elevated version of a Hot Pocket. But if I'm going to go for flavor, if I want to get something more traditional for me, I got to go with a slice of pizza. That's my jam. That's fair. All right, I'm going to hold this up. David, talk about this. We still got about a minute left. Whoa! Whoa, Mario. there you go. So those See, this is why are, I can't smile. I know. Poor Sarah. I'm sorry. You'll get some soon here, Sarah. But mm, we have stay in your corner, these Sarah. right here. <laughs> these are huge cinnamon rolls. I'll hold them And they're again. covered in pecans. Look at that. Ooh. It's like I'm, as big as just, your face. Huge. But yeah. Pick one up. All right, so we have 15 seconds, David. I wanted you to take a bite of some of this action over here, Max. I'll get you I to will. bite something eventually. But Texas Eats, you guys, we have a really fun show for you, and it starts right after this. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling around Central Texas looking for delicious restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for a pizza joint slinging out hot wings, sandwiches, and gooey pizza. Plus, we visit a Tejano music icon and his son for a new taco truck in San Antonio. And we check out some of our favorite restaurants from 2020.
When you're on the south side of San Antonio and you want to go somewhere that has traditional Mexican food, but you can also go somewhere that has potentially one of the coolest Tejano music icons ever, well, por que no los dos? You can have them both right here at Taco Jimenez. Let's go inside and see what they got on the menu. Joining me now is Leonardo Jimenez III, and in front of us is a bunch of delicious food at your food truck that's just about to come out. This is the hot new thing of 2021, right? Oh yeah, this is the <laughs> best thing that ever happened to me. There you go. <laughs> and you know, we gotta talk about it. I mean, your dad, he's internationally known, uh, the Texas Tornadoes, Flaco Jimenez. He's incredible. But what was it like growing up with him, and what drove you to do food and not the music stuff? Well, it's hard. it was hard. We were, we were raised by my mom. My, my dad was always on the road. Um, my mom was um, were Mexican. I mean, she's from Monterrey, Mexico. Uh -huh. So I learned a lot about the, their food, the recipes, um, what have you. And I guess, I mean, people got to eat. So I said, you know what, let's give it a shot. Joining me now is Leonardo's father. This is Flaco Jimenez, the man himself. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, glad to be here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a nice day. It's a gorgeous yeah. day. How do you guys? <laughs> and I, we wanted to talk with you because, um, of course, people know you. You're just a, a global icon for the music that you've created throughout the decades. But your son now has a food truck. Yes. And it's a really fun name because it's kind of playing off of off the Flaco, right? It's Taco Jimenez, right? So. What does that mean to you to be able to ha see your son go and, and open up his own food truck? And he said he modeled it after yeah. the food from his mother, your wife. Uh, yes, I, I'm really excited, really. Now this is, it's your son and your daughter-in-law, Gilda. They're the ones that are making all the food in the truck. Yes, there is the yeah. one that are in charge of, uh, of everything. Food, we have some of the food in front of us. It oh, looks yes, delicious. Have I, you got to try any of it? No, I'm going to hit it in a little while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And, yeah, this uh, one, it's, it's, it looks a little bit spicy. I'm excited to try that yeah, one. And this one is, I believe it's called the Flaco Taco. I believe that. Oh, it. so I think so. <laughs> yes. Uh, uh, but there's so many hits with the Texas tornadoes that are still resonating within our culture here in the United States, especially in South Texas. Yes. Which one is the one that's, that's stuck with you that you really enjoyed being a part of uh, when it was being written and when you would perform it? Say, hey, baby, que pasó? <laughs> uh, how long does it take you to make menudo here? It takes from four to six hours. You know, boil it first and, you know, and then add the pozole. And, right. Know, then after it's boiled and everything, you just put the, the you know, the, the the ingredients that it needs to it needs to have. So that's the most secret thing you've told me so far. You you put the ingredients in it. <laughs> mm. Those are nice textures on them. Yeah. I absolutely love menudo, and the menudo out here at the food truck, it's very simple, but it's done right. It's nice, bold flavors. It has big pieces in there, too, so it's just chunky, good menudo. It tastes like something you'd go over to your grandmother's house and she'd make for you, like, on a cold day, or you're not feeling so good. It's just gonna make you, you feel better. It's like food for the soul. You have two different presentations of the barbacoa in front of us. Uh, which, one's, which one's here? And which one's here? This one, this one's uh, this one's the, the the tacos bañados. It's of course it's the five mini tacos uh, filled with barbacoa, and uh, with the, the savory sauce, you know the uh, picante sauce. I'm ready to get messy. Okay. This one looks spicy and messy. Oh yeah, that. What's gonna... the spice level on this thing? That's probably maybe from one to ten. One to ten. Uh, maybe an eight. <laughs> <laughs> right. or, so here we go. Hopefully it's not uh, as bad as I as I think it is. You had me set up. Yeah, yeah you had me scared. Uh, of course, it's we, just delicious. Yeah, of course we can put less than that. I mean, but I mean, it just you depends. It, up. On, it, it depends on the person. Really Ooh, like it's just flavor. Yeah, I like spicy. The little tacos have a nice spice to it. This one, the flaco taco, looks like it's it's creamy. It's going to have kind of more of like a, a cooling yes. flavor to it. Yeah, I'm excited to try it. There we go. And like you said, these are like the regular size one. This is big. Yeah, this is, we we try to load it up. <laughs> you try. Look at that. <laughs> now that's a taco right there. You load it up. Look at this. Hold on. I hold it. <laughs> I gotta do the logo. I gotta hit him with the logo. <laughs> oh. Give me some blood. 
<laughs> mm. That's the one. Yeah. So and oh of, wow. Of course, you can put some. Uh, we can put some mm. salsa on the side if you want to. You know, people that want, that doesn't have no salsa at all. But um, that is just delicious, though. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. This is absolutely delicious. The menudo is, is great as well. Are you going to be all over the place? Where are you going to be at? No, we're going to be here on the side of the, on the road right here, next door. <laughs> um, so we're going to park there, you know, from you know, from Thursday to Sunday, of course, five to twelve a.m. Okay. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll be we'll be here. So we'll there you go. So you guys got to make sure if you want to find out more information about them, you can follow them on social media. This is Tacos Jimenez. This is the place to come out to. And who knows, maybe Flocka would be out here. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> you don't know. So when you come out here, don't expect it, but if it's here, it's a little treat for you. Um, the food is great. I highly recommend trying the Flocka taco. I think that's just <laughs> awesome. You're gonna need a lot of them. Get the aguas frescas. I mean, they're all very delicious. I would say the lime and the melon are, are my jam. That's oh. really good. You have the sodas out here as well. The menudo's rocking. Thank you so much for having us out no here. No problem. Cheers to you. Cheers. Mm. Now we're here in the Deco District in San Antonio to go inside of a restaurant that's serving up some amazing food. Let's go inside Deco Pizzeria. Joining us now is Jacob Valenzuela. He is the owner out here at Deco Pizzeria, and I'm super excited because you got a lot of really great food in front of us. But I have to know, how long has the restaurant been here? We'll celebrate 10 years, April of next year. 10 awesome years, we've had a great time. <laughs> and a lot of support from the neighborhood, so we're super excited. Something that changed on your menu during 2020 uh, that kind of came in like a full-time item was the chicken on a stick, right? Of course. That's a Fiesta favorite. San Antonians love Fiesta, and we didn't have Fiesta this year, right. so the demand just kept it on the menu. People it's made to order, so it's a chicken breast. We uh, use our popular, infamous uh, <laughs> mix, fry it. Once it's fried, we put a jalapeno and serve it. Oh yeah, got a little kick to it. Mm. You got the jalapeno, you gotta take a bite. Give me some elbow, give me some elbow. Wow. So Fiesta is a great time of the year. Everybody gets their chicken on a stick and out here at Deco Pizzeria, you can actually get it all year long, especially since you know, 2020 has been a hard year. We didn't get Fiesta. So it's really cool to be able to come out to a restaurant and, and get it just to have some fun. Of course, if you're out here and you want to get a couple to bring home with you, the family would love them too. Breading on the outside, it's light, it's got a good crunch to it. The chicken on the inside is nice and tender. You guys have a really nice fry on there. The seasoning's light, but it's there. And these little pickled jalapenos, you can't go wrong with a pickled Absolutely. jalapeno. And you have award-winning chicken wings on the menu, right? Absolutely. So what you have here is our traditional uh, wing. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, not sauced on any uh, of our sauces. Mm -hmm. We have a buffalo wing and our award-winning raspberry chipotle wing. You think I should dip it in? Dip it too. Okay, I'm gonna dip. Look at that. That's the bite right there. Mm. Wow. That's a juicy wing. Breading that you guys have on the outside of your fried items, it actually takes on the sauce really nicely, where it's allowing that glaze to kind of just sit on the outside, but it's not compromising the, the actual crunch from the breading. It's, it's just the perfect amount of crunch you want on a good breaded wing. Although this place says pizzeria, they have really good chicken wings. In fact, they got regular ones, they have buffalo, and then they have a raspberry chipotle one that's award winning. Comes with their house made ranch on the side too. You just dip it in, it's got the crunch on there, it's just goodness. So here we have a uh, meat calzone, uh, ma uh, galbani mozzarella, ricotta cheese, uh, pepperoni, Canadian bacon. So we use um, the best cheese and flour. So we use a uh, galbani cheese, Italian cheese, an Italian flour, caputo, mm -hmm. and it allows for this beautiful color. So it's perfect for our calzones. Uh, we use the flour in our, in our dough for the pizza. And we even use the same flour for our homemade bread. So it's light and flaky. <laughs> that, that's, that's the nice. bite, that's the bite, right? Mm. Oh, wow. Stuff. I promise. Mm. The little bit of ricotta that's in there just sets it over the top. 
That is a great bite. This calzone is really special. It has a nice flaky crust on the outside, and that's because the kind of the flour that they're using, it's a double lot flour. It's, it's only like a couple places in town that are even using this high quality of flour. On the inside, you got the ricotta, the mozzarella blend. This one happens to be a pepperoni, so it's got the pepperonis on the inside as well. You dip it in the house-made marinara, it really doesn't get much better than this. Look, there's a sandwich that's been staring at me over here. Look at this guy. This is a homemade focaccia bread. Homemade focaccia bread, that's the Italian hero sandwich. Uh, of course, banana peppers, Italian hero. Gotta do it. Gotta do it. So look at that. Put a little bit of these banana peppers on there. You get your zing with your zang on there. I'm gonna take a bite, here we go. This it's, is heaven. It's one of our popular sandwiches, most popular mm. sandwiches. The bread makes the sandwich, but it's the perfect combination of the tomatoes and all the meat that's layered up. The cheese is melted nicely, the fresh lettuce. I mean, it's just a really good bite. But yeah, that focaccia though. <laughs> the Italian here sandwich is delightful. It has a really nice zing to it on the inside. And it's the focaccia bread that's on the outside that they're making at their medical center location. They're bringing it in here, they're loading it up. I just a perfect little bite for lunchtime. So the sandwich is amazing. The chicken wings, the calzone, the chicken on a stick. And we're gonna get to the pizza here. But why a pizza place? The local pizzeria shop closed down in July of 2010. Me being in the neighborhood, still living in the neighborhood, we can't have a neighborhood uh, without a pizzeria and wing shop. So that's what really spearheaded the idea. And in uh, April of 2011, we launched and opened up our doors and we've been here almost 10 years now. So the neighborhood, a lot of support, a lot of love from our family and friends in the neighborhood. So we hope to be here for another 10, 20, 30 years. And with food like this, I don't see why not. Go to the pizza last out here. I mean, this is what people want. They see the pizzeria, they want the pizza. This is like your supreme standard pizza, right? Absolutely. All right, I'm gonna take a slice right here, but so, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give one oh, to yeah. you. This is where it's at. Cheers. Cheers. It's my favorite. That is so simple, but done right. When you think of a supreme pizza, this is the bite you think of. These are the flavors and the textures that you want. I mean, you guys are killing it. It's a pizzeria, so you know they gotta be making rocking pizzas out here. And the one that we're trying, it was the Supreme Pizza, and it just has all the little notes and nuances about it that you want from a Supreme Pizza. It has the little peppers, it has the mushrooms, it has the olives on there. But what's special about it, again, it's that dough. And that's really what separates this from other pizza spots. It's the house-made marinara, the house-made pizza sauce, and that dough. You have a little bar program out here as well. You can come out here and you can sit on the patio, socially distanced as well. You get your drinks, you get your food, you have a great time with the kids. This is where it's at, man. This is. Absolutely delicious. You're crazy if you don't come and give this a try. If you have given this a try, you know that the food is rocking. I highly recommend the chicken wings. I think you guys are doing a great job with all the bread and products that you have, including the calzone. Cheers to you. Cheers, Cheers and to 10 more years. 10 more years. Here we go.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Now we're going inside Los Azulejos, a Mexican restaurant reimagining traditional Mexican cuisine. These right here are the ribeye tacos. Check this out. I mean, this is like over the top, right? But this is Mexican fusion on the next level. This is like gourmet, high-end quality. You're in Las Vegas staying at a really nice hotel. <laughs> Food, I mean, this is where it's at. You have the tortillas, you have all that ribeye cooked to perfection. You have a nice medium rare, medium finish on there, seared on the outside, locking all that flavor. Just a little bit of salt and pepper on the outside and they're prime. So you got all that nice marbling in there as well. Sauteed onions, guacamole, microgreens on there. And then you have poblano ash. That's all that's, that's put on top as well. That's just extra flavor, extra goodness on there. Another dimension that you wouldn't find anywhere else, especially in San Antonio. And then you have this beef bone chilling off to the side with a knife by it. All right, that's uh, butter of the gods, okay? So you just get a scoop of that, you throw it on top of your tortilla, you throw it on top of your meat, and these tacos are gonna be like the next level. Grilled onions, guacamole, and uh, poblano ash again. I use it a lot, this is, I like it, you know, it's, it, it goes well and it, it's a good decor too. Well, I'm ready to give them a try. All right, so I'm gonna put a little bit on top. And they're not playing around, y'all. These are huge tacos. Wow. <laughs> this is amazing. That's incredible. And the, the guacamole has a nice acidity to it. Like there's like a little bit of lime juice in there as well. And the poblano ash, surprising, is a standout. The ribeye that's in there is killer, but then the poblano ash really accel accelerates that flavor. This is really good. The microgreens, nice texture on there as well. But see, I still got a little bit of that that bone marrow on top, so I'm gonna bite some of that now. Oh, really good. <laughs> that is incredible. They're just melts in your mouth, y'all. All the flavors together. That, that little bit of char flavor from the grill on the ribeye, and that nice sauteed onion flavor in there as well. This is where it's at, it's a full, well-rounded flavor. And then you get double layered on the tortillas. That's how you know it's the real deal because you're not gonna break through on that. That's sturdy. That's gonna hold up all that weight, all those juices that are on there. An incredible dish. It's really gonna blow your mind. And as you saw, I mean, that's a full ribeye throwing on this bad boy. This is worth it, y'all. I would come back just for this. This is incredible. Executive chef Daniel Mendoza has worked at multiple restaurants across the nation, including restaurants in Mexico, and he's influenced from all different kinds of culinary backgrounds, including French cooking. That's why this food looks and tastes incredible. I started at Accordion Grill Paris for one year, five years in the Gilded OB. I worked for Emerald Lagasse at the MGM Grand. Wow. Then we opened the new tower of the Venetian, the Palazzo Hotel Casino. beautiful piece of artwork right here is traditional Oaxacan trayuda. I don't think I said it right, but it's like Mexican pizza. I mean, you can hang this up in the MoMA, y'all. Got all this beautiful colors in the middle, the different patterns on there, the different sauces, and it's nothing like I've ever seen before. And once again, you know, they're gonna take it over to that next level, so it's gonna be over the top. It's a traditional uh, Oaxacan dish. It's uh, made with uh, masa fresca, rosemary, a little bit of cumin. We put chorizo, beans, uh, black beans, and chipotle as a sauce, as a pizza. And then we put a little bit of shredded Oaxacan uh, cheese, a prime hanger steak, uh, avocado, tomato, a little bit of uh, slaw, a coleslaw on it, and queso fresco with poblano ash, uh, balsamic reduction, and chipotle mayo. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Wow. I've never had anything like this before. It's kind of like a pizza, kind of like a taco, and a lot like nothing you've ever had before. It's very good. A lot of great flavors on there. The edible flowers, the, the onions that are on here as well, the marinated onions the large slices of avocado, and then the sauces that are on top. And again, that poblano ash. You get a little bit on that bite, 
and it's gonna change the whole dimension of what you're eating. It's a bold, bold plate. This is an appetizer. That's an appetizer, that's bigger than, than my head, man. That's huge. This right here is Alaskan flan. Now, it's called Alaskan, right, because usually when you have those kinds of dishes, you're gonna set it on fire, right? You're gonna do what you're doing here. Now you have that meringue that's on top that's been toasted. You have the flan on the inside, and you have the cinnamon stick that's right there in the middle that's been lit on fire as well. I mean, the flavor coming off of this, look, it's still a little smoky. I'm excited, this is crazy. But here we go, I'm gonna bite into it. Wow. <laughs> it's like this uh, Central American s'mores. That's kind, of, that's kind of what you're getting here. This is good, man. I love everything about this place. Can I stay in the back? Can I sleep in the back? Oh, yeah. Okay. I can sleep here, too. You guys got to come out to Los Azulejos. It is a delicious restaurant featuring all different kinds of gourmet Mexican food. Things you've never even heard of, thought of, or even dreamt of. They got it on the menu. And the dessert out here is fantastic. And it's like, again, it's something you've never seen. They're lighting cinnamon sticks on fire at your table for you. And then they're toasting the meringue right there. It's incredible. There's an outdoor patio area where you can come out and enjoy yourself. And you can stay safe outside as well as inside. There's nice social distancing going on. Get the dessert though. You'll treat yourself. That's where it's at. Later on the show, we're headed to the east side of San Antonio to go inside of a popular pizza joint. And next on Texas Eats, we're going inside of a Sichuan noodle house on the southeast side of San Antonio. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. back to Texas Eats. Chifu Noodle is a new Sichuan style noodle house on the southeast side of San Antonio. We want to share the food, we want to share our Chinese culture and our story. They're serving up classic American Chinese dishes that everyone loves, but they're also whipping out some of the best Sichuan style noodle dishes in San Antonio. One of the most popular dishes on the menu, Dan Dan noodles. Dan Dan noodles are made with handmade noodles that get prepared with pork, peanuts, hot oil, preserved mustard greens, and Sichuan peppercorns. This is 
a famous Szechuan noodle dish, the Dan Dan noodles. Uh, you can see they mix everything up. I mean, I don't know, there was a copious amount of seasoning and different spices and different oils and things that were put on top. And uh, it just smells absolutely incredible. When you come here, this is the dish to try. saw all the different seasonings, all the spices that went into it. But when you try it, it has this one uniform flavor that's a little savory, it's a little bit spicy, not like too spicy, and then it has this really nice saltiness to it, and then the texture of the noodles, it's like al dente. This is incredible. It's that unctuous umami flavor that you want. It's like a satiating experience. This is really good. I could eat this whole bowl right now. <laughs> But there's so much more food to try. Also on the menu, rice noodles made with tender stewed beef. This dish right here, this is the beef rice noodle dish. Look at that. I mean, tons of broth in there. You have that beef that's just stewing in the back. Oh, wow. This is a killer dish. The Dan Dan noodles and this, I would eat both of them right now. You can down them. And it's like, it tastes so fresh. It's the middle of the summer. This is a hot noodle dish, but it's really good and you'll want to eat the whole thing. General manager Crystal Yi and chef Wendy Jiang are not your average restaurant partners. Like she has two PhD degrees. One is in geology, one is in education. I have a master's degree. My mom always asked me, for all these years you've been in school, why do you want to open up a restaurant? It's gonna, it's gonna be really tired. Their passion for food and culture is the driving force behind the restaurant. So how did you find out about this place? Total accident. I am next door getting my tire repaired. <laughs> and I was asking them if there's any vegan options in the neighborhood and they said no. I stumbled into here. And what do you think so far? It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> I was I was absolutely amazed and excited and um, the prices are absolutely phenomenal and the food is fantastic. One of the dishes you have to try when you visit, spicy crispy chicken. If you want to try something a little bit different that you normally wouldn't try, say when you go to a Chinese restaurant, the spicy and crispy chicken is where you need to do it. I mean, they're not playing around. When they say spicy, it's like a whole ladle full of peppers. Look at this. They're not joking. You can eat them if you're crazy. This is like fried chicken to the next level. It's complex flavors reduced down to their simplest form to give you a really well-rounded bite. This is where it's at. This is a great dish. It's the noodle dishes and the chicken dishes, everything in between. It's all delicious. It's really, really good stuff. You're gonna wanna eat, I mean, probably enough for three people, but it's a hot day. It doesn't matter. Get, this, get the noodles. Later on the show, we're headed to the east side of San Antonio to go inside of a popular pizza joint. And next on the show, we're going inside of a restaurant where you can make your own s'mores outside. It's a camping themed restaurant. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back.
Welcome back to Texas Eats. Camp Outpost Company is a new San Antonio restaurant located in the historic Lone Star Arts District near Southtown. Back in the day, uh, it housed all kinds of tractors. And most recently, it had uh, coin-operated machines that were stored in there. The menu is inspired by the great outdoors, featuring juicy rotisserie chicken. <laughs> Brine chicken is seasoned and placed on a wood-fire rotisserie pit. It cooks halfway and gets finished on the grill to order. There are multiple sides to choose from on the menu, including smashed Yukon gold potatoes and house-made coleslaw. When you come inside the restaurant, you're going to notice this big fixture right here, right in the kitchen. And this is the rotisserie area. They're par rotisserieing, they're par cooking the chicken, right? So that way, they're doing about halfway. They're going to finish it on the grill for you, though, which is awesome because you're going to get a really nice texture on the outside of it. This is organic chicken, so it gives you a higher quality protein. And check this out. This thing is juicy. <laughs> that's, that's just half of it. This is half of a half of a quarter chicken. Comes with a little bit of slaw. You pick your side on there. And I got some of these smashed Yukon gold potatoes, little baby potatoes. I'm going to try all that. But first, that's the chicken right there. This is why you want to come out, right? This is like something you want to cook when you're camping. It's never good, though. You're going to cook it on one of those outdoor grills that's at your campsite. It's not going to taste right. You come here, it's going to taste good. Here we go. That's a good bird, y'all. Oh my goodness. Exquisite. The outside is nice and crunchy. That skin is just sitting on that grill. You see the flame shooting up on it? I mean, if you're a chicken skin person, this is where it's at, <laughs> okay? That is fantastic. But then we talk about the meat when you get on the inside. Nice and juicy, it's very tender, but it's got a lot of flavor to it. And that's a part of that rotisserie process, right? All that fat from the skin is going in and it's going, burying itself all the way down to the bone. You're getting a really nice seasoning all throughout the chicken. It's a really great rotisserie chicken. This isn't your standard one you're gonna find at a grocery store or something like that, okay? This is like elevated. This is something that you want to enjoy and share. Tell your friends about. This concept brings a fun, outdoor, dog-friendly restaurant to San Antonio. A spot to grab some tasty brews and check this out. You can cook s'mores at an outdoor fire pit. The idea of um, camp was to make it uh, fun and, and, and really the main aspect of the dining is the wood-fired rotisserie and being involved in this area is, I think is, is really um, exciting. Also on the menu, a giant rotisserie porchetta sandwich. This right here is the rotisserie porchetta sandwich. Check this out. This is where it's at, y'all. They got it on the rotisserie for a little bit to get it going, and then they finish it off in a pan. You have fried lemons and a little bit of jalapeno on there as well. You have a really nice aioli on there, a little bit of slaw, and then these buns. These are house-made buns that are brought in from Piatti's. I mean, this is where it's at, y'all. All right, I'm super excited. Oh, and they're using fennel. They're using a little bit of rosemary on the outside. I mean, this, it smells fantastic, and it looks really good. Here we go. Here's the bite. Man, oh man, <laughs> that's good. Right off the bat, you're getting that fried lemon, right? So it's a little bit of that savory, a little bit of that unctuous flavor, but it's citrus, right? So it's gonna be a little bit acidic. It's blending in with the slaw really nicely. You know, that creaminess coming in from the aioli. And then you have that really nice porchetta on there, right? I mean, the fennel, the rosemary, all of them shine out so well. And then the bread on the outside, nice and toasted, so it's that crunch texture. You're hitting every single note you want. And on top of the fact, it's a big sandwich. So if you're really hungry, this is a great option. You guys gotta come out to Camp Outpost Company. It's a brand new restaurant here in the historic Lone Star Arts District. Great setting out there. A lot of space to socially distance. You can bring your dogs and the food is out of this world. The drinks behind the bar are killer. You guys, this is the new spot to come to. Later on the show, we're going inside a Mexican restaurant serving up some wild quesadillas. And next, we're headed to the east side of San Antonio to go inside of a popular pizza joint. Texas Eats will be right back.
back to Texas Eats. Now, we're heading to the east side of downtown San Antonio to go inside of a popular pizza joint. Let's see what they got cooking in the oven at Truth Pizzeria. This right here is a mushroom garlic pepperoni pizza out here at Truth Pizzeria. Check that out, man. It is just perfect in every sense of the way, right? Truth Pizzeria started as a food truck called Sula Strada, but now owner John Winkler is cranking out some tasty pizzas for everyone at this brand new brick and mortar. I like playing with fire. When I decided to do a food truck, the wood-fired oven was the most attractive. It took me a long time to, uh, to get this place started. I've been working on it for two years and got pretty close before the world shut down. And this pizza joint isn't just slinging out pizzas. They also got killer sandwiches on the menu. This is the Crockett sandwich. It has mozzarella cheese, Italian sausage, roasted red bell peppers, and caramelized onions. Now this bread, everything right here, the bread on the outside, it's all made in house. I'm gonna give it a bite. Looks incredible. And it's like a little panini almost. It's like all kind of smashed together. On the outside, it's already baked to perfection, right, the bread, but then when it gets put back into the oven, it gets like a second life, so it gets a little bit crunchier, a little bit thicker on the outside, but then all of the cheese becomes gooey on there. The Italian sausage has a nice, like, fennel flavor to it, it's like some little seasonings that are in there as well. Everything shines through really nicely, but then the red bell pepper in there with the caramelized onions, that's where it's at. You can just give me a bowl of that. I'll eat it all day. John started making pizzas years ago after he received a strange gift from a friend. So this came from Italy 45, 50 years ago to Pennsylvania, then to Austin, and eventually to me. I've been feeding it since 2013. Feed it flour and water. And that's all the yeast we use for our bread dough. So this was, dough. this was in somebody's Italian kitchen for a while. Yeah, that's what I hear. <laughs> If you're looking for a great pizza, you have to try Truth Pizzeria. They have an outdoor seating area and you can call ahead to pick up to go. From the sauce to the cheese and the dough, everything just melts in your mouth. It's the ultimate mouth fill you want on a pizza. It has that nice little crust on the outside, but then the dough's nice and tender. The pepperonis are so thin that they just melt. They just like eviscerate, right, when, they, when you take a bite. The mushrooms, when they go into the oven, they get a really nice texture on them as well. A little bit of the juice, the liquid comes out of there. It's just, this is the ultimate pizza. And I love that they have this brick and mortar now, because now I have a, a place to come to all the time when you want your fix. And the cheese, it's the perfect amount on there, so that you get this nice creamy bite. And then to cut through the fat from the cheese, that sauce that's on there, a little bit of acidity from the tomatoes, Everything just works. It's the ultimate well-rounded bite that you want from a slice of pizza. And look at that. There's no soggy pizza. It's all firm. This is where it's at, y'all. Mm. You guys gotta come out here. Truth Pizzeria on the east side of downtown San Antonio off East Houston Street. All this stuff is delicious. From the pizzas, the sandwiches, you will find something you love and you'll keep coming back for. For me, it's that garlic and then those roasted red bell peppers all day. In fact, I could just eat it like this. I wonder if you just roll it up, right? You can kind of make your own, like a uh, little sandwich here, just out of the pizza. Is that how you got the idea? You just kind of rolled it, folded it over, and you're like, that's a sandwich. <laughs> Coming up next on Texas Eats, we're going inside of a Mexican restaurant making some wild quesadillas. The tortillas are where it's at. That's what sets the, the, everything apart. You can tell they're fresh, but they're thin and it adds a really nice vehicle for all the flavors. The green salsa's got a little kick to it. If you like spice, you gotta try the green salsa. It a great flavor as well. The chicken thing, you can tell it's been marinated in that sauce. So don't go anywhere. Texas Eats will be right back. <laughs> <laughs> 